What is going on YouTube? Fascinating Graveyard. Today here, I'm in Washington DC, the nation's capital. I'm standing on Pennsylvania Avenue, about four blocks away down that street, is where our president, Joe Biden, lives. And today we're gonna to talk about a man who a lot of historians would say had a very key role in the assassination of Abraham Lincoln, unbeknownst to many people. And that man's name is John Frederick Parker. So let me explain why he had a hand in Abraham Lincoln being assassinated. So let's talk about a little bit of history of who John Frederick Parker was. So John Frederick Parker was a Washington DC police officer. He was actually one of the very first police officers in the District of Columbia here. The police department was founded in 1861. Now, Mr. Parker, Officer Parker, was known for a couple of things. Neither of those things being any good. Number one, he was a drunk. During his shift, uh, he would often drink during it, before it, and after it, a hopeless alcoholic. Uh, number two, one thing that he loved to do was sleep on the job. Uh, he would find an empty streetcar right around these very streets that I'm walking on right now and just go to sleep. Oh, and number three, he loved, loved, loved visiting brothels. And I'm not talking about visiting them to make sure that their smoke detectors are working. Before he became a police officer, he was a carpenter. So I guess back in those days, you know, there wasn't really a high list of uh, things that you needed to be in terms of like, moral aptitude and physical fitness to be a police officer. I guess anybody could just be a cop. So let's go back to that day, April 14th, 1865, the day, of course, 56-year-old uh, president of the United States, Abraham Lincoln, was assassinated. Now, Officer Parker was tasked with guarding the president that day while he attended Fourth Theater with his wife to watch our American Cousin, which was a very uh, famous play that was going around then. His job was to stand right outside of Lincoln's box, right by the balcony where he was watching the play. He was supposed to show up to work at around 4 p.m. Now, being Officer Parker, being the man that he was, of course, he was three hours late. Uh, he didn't get to work until 7 p.m. The show was scheduled to start at 9. So he was supposed to show up to work to just case the place, make sure that everything was okay, this and that. The play starts at nine. Now, during the intermission, this is somewhat debatable about what happened, but basically it was widely known back in those days that Abraham Lincoln did not like security around him. Those days, you would have officers of the army that would guard the president. But then again, you know, assassination was never a thought. And Abraham Lincoln just didn't like to be constantly followed by people. And oftentimes, Lincoln, as the president of the United States, would leave the White House and just go walking around these streets at around 10, 30, 11 o'clock at night. It was, it was not... Uh, rare at all if you lived in Washington DC in the 1860s to see a six foot four six foot five man wearing a pea coat walking down the street oh wait that's the president of the United States Abraham Lincoln and he would just walk right up and down these streets like just he was a regular citizen like he was a regular guy so on that day during the play, the intermission, it is reported that either one of the things happened. Either Officer Parker went on his own volition to a bar next door or Lincoln dismissed him. Now, when he leaves to go to the bar during intermission, he goes with Lincoln's coachman and valet. Now, of course, across the street, that is where the assassination of the President Abraham Lincoln happened at right there 
I believe, and I could be wrong, I believe the bar is right there. That would have been the bar where Officer Parker was there drinking with the valet and the coachman. Oh, and so he's at the bar having a grand old time and he meets a man at the bar. He says, hey, how you doing, my friend? What is your name? And he says, my name is John. And he says, you know what? My name is John, too. Yes, John, John Wilkes Booth. Pleased to meet you. So they're drinking, having a good time. John Will Booth, John Wilkes Booth, sneaks into the theater because, of course, he was a very well-known actor. And a lot of these people working in this theater uh, knew him pretty well. He goes into the theater, pulls out his... 44 caliber pistol puts it to the back of President Lincoln's head and pulls the trigger Lincoln survived 10 hours or so he died the very next day April 15th 1865 so now we're going to take a trip we're going to go to the grave of Officer John Frederick Parker. He's not very far from this theater. And here we are, three miles down the road at the Glenwood Cemetery here in Washington, D.C. and got some uh, rather exquisite artwork carved from a tree. This is absolutely amazing. I know you can't see it because the sky is overcast, but uh, somebody came here and uh, did a little bit of uh, wood carvings. Very, very talented. Okay, so you guys are probably wondering, well, what happened to Officer Parker after Abraham Lincoln was assassinated? Well, obviously I'm at the cemetery, so that tells you what happened to him. But about a month after the assassination, uh, he was brought up on charges of... Uh, dereliction of duty or neglect of duty uh, there's no transcripts of the case but obviously it was di dismissed because not only did he get to keep his job as a washington dc police officer but this guy was actually and i kid you not was tasked with guarding the president's wife at the white house and he, i guess he was at the white house and basically the president's wife told him, you're responsible for my husband's assassination. If it wasn't for you neglecting your job, he would still be alive today. So she dismissed him or fired him. And he goes back to the force, still drinking, still doing, you know, visiting the old, the old brothels. And a few years later in 1868, he was finally fired. After he was fired, he went back to being a carpenter, and he later died on June 28, 1890, at the age of 60. Uh, he died from uh, pneumonia and complications uh, of asthma, but pretty much pneumonia. So this guy, he's buried with his wife and three of his kids. Now, I'm not sure why but they do not have a grave marker. But according to cemetery records, he would be buried right in this area right here, this open space. Of course, again, like I said, there's no office. Excuse me, I didn't say that. There's no office open because today is Sunday, so I can't get the actual plot, but he would be buried right in this area, somewhere right here. Excuse me? Yeah, keep walking on this trail. Just keep walking. See where that flag is? Yep, follow that trail. It'll lead right, right out. I'm always here to help lend a helping hand. This is why I usually carry mace with me at cemeteries. You never, never know. He looks like a fine man, though. Anyways, um, just a small piece of uh, very fascinating history that you might not have known of. And 
I would have never known about this story if it wasn't for Mobile Instinct. So me and him did a collab video on the assassination of Abraham Lincoln. This is only but a very small piece of that story. I will put the link to that video in the description box below. Please subscribe. Hit my boy's channel up. It's a very fascinating video to say the least. Okay, guys, I'm out of here. I got to get in my van. Make sure that my mace is close to me. You never know. I like the cut of that guy's jib. He had a trusting face, but hey. At the end of the day, trust few and far. Fascinating graveyard. My name is Lamont, your faithful host. I hope you enjoyed this video. I will see you on the next vlog. Be good. Peace out.